Hey everybody, it's Evan here. I've got a really great Moodle moment for you today. We're going to take a look at one of the items that's most underutilized within our Moodle system and, and probably lots of other Moodle systems uh, everywhere, and that is the rubric. Uh, you can go and use a rubric and attach it to an assignment wherever in Moodle, both on our PD server and our K-12 server. Uh, it's a great tool to use. Now, we're not going to talk about what makes a good rubric, and uh, rubric is an assessment tool. There are things that um, make them good or not so good. You know, it's not just supposed to be an elaborate scoring guide or such. If you want more information about rubrics, lots of great resources in the OLLI teacher community, um, or contact us and we can, we can get you in touch with those. But we're going to take a look at how to make a rubric today within Moodle. I'm actually in one of our professional development courses. This is one which uh, looks at presentations that, te that, uh, that you can give. And uh, we have a final assignment in that class. And not anything out of the ordinary. You just go in here and um, in that assignment you're going to upload your final presentation. But notice when you go here it lists the grading criteria tells you, you know, what the points are for the different categories and such. All of these are items that are key items within the course, and so it uh, brings it up. Okay. Um, now you note that within there you can see you've got different categories here, um, but they all have the three category structure, except for this one up here has two categories. You can go with any criteria and make as many categories and adjust the points however you'd like. We'll take a look at that here in a little bit. All right, so. Let's say we added a submission, and I'm going to pick something here from our recent files. We'll just say it's that. Okay, I've added that in. I'm going to switch over to my teacher view for that assignment. Okay, you note that it says here you got one um, draft so far. Looks like I didn't do a final submission for it, but I can go ahead and grade that. I'm going to click here to grade all submissions. And if I want to, I could download the item. I can still go in and add comments if I'd like. But if I grade it like I usually do, click grade. Note I've got the rubric here. And this is how easy it is to use. I can click and identify the categories. And this one up here. Note that with each one, you could leave a comment. you'd like. And then when you're all done, these areas here are outside of the rubric, the feedback comments, the feedback for Poodle, and those are things that are just standard with the, uh, the assignment. So you could leave general feedback if you'd like as well. Let's go ahead and save the changes. And then we'll go back as my student. And we'll take a look. And now when I'm on that same assignment sheet, it says it's graded. This is the criteria listed here, and then it actually shows what I earned here. Okay. If your assignment is set up, you can see it calculates it for you. If your assignment is set up so that it um, um, allows for multiple submissions, you can go ahead and resubmit. And the teacher would get it, and they could change the rubric as is. Um, again, it shows comments that, that come in over here. So it's a great way to do some very quick assessment that's um, more in-depth than uh, just leaving a lot of blank comments. All right, so let's take a look at then how to go and set up a rubric. Let me go back over to my teacher view. And I'm going to go into a different course. I've got just a, a brand new assignment I've created here, just a sample uh, rubric assignment. Um, I haven't done anything really with it. I'm going to skip down here. Here under submission types, it allows you to say what type of submissions that you would like. Uh, you don't actually have to have it be submitted at all. In fact, we've got an example in a different uh, course here where we've got a final project where students go and they submit it. And the reason why is we want students to go then and then reply to other students with their final project. So this is a forum. You can't attach a rubric to a forum, so what this instructor did was they simply created an assignment right below it and so this is the rubric for that final project and once you do here it says you know you don't have to go and uh, submit anything here this is just where I'm going to do the grading. Note with this type of rubric we use all types of different categories and different amounts of criteria anywhere from three up to five and such in there. Okay. 
All right, let's go back to this one. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it to be a file submission. So in this case, they would, uh, they would upload the file. Feedback types. Again, these would be the things that would appear after the rubric. I can leave feedback comments and feedback poodle on if I'd like. I'm going to go down to grade. And under grade, you get the uh, number of maximum points, which I can change. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. And then look here where it says grading uh, method. Typically, yours will be a default of simple direct grading. You just enter in the score. There is other options here. Marking guide is like a simple checklist type of thing. You, you know, mark whether they got the points or not. But rubric is this more advanced one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click rubric. And then I'm going to click save and display. Okay. And then when you're done with that, typically what will come up is this screen right here. And it'll say, okay, now that you made your assignment, how do you want, you know, what do you want for a rubric? Uh, in some cases, uh, you could pick a template from an existing form that's been saved on the site. Um, we actually do have one on here that is a template, but I'm not going to use that in this case. I'm going to go ahead and define mine from scratch. I'm click here. And it is going to require you to name it. It doesn't matter what you name it, so I'm going to call it the sample rubric assignment rubric. And then down here, it says, okay, now you're going to click to edit your criteria. So um, I might say creativity in design for this project. And I'd want to be uh, much more descriptive than what I'm going to put in. Then, um, but in the interest of time, we'll just go ahead and type in those items. Note, I can come in, I can change the points. Let's say I want this to be more points. And you can do that. And it doesn't have to be equal levels. I could go 0 to 5, for example. And if I wanted to add in and then another level, I could do that as well. Just click that Add Level button. And we'll do that. If you want to add in additional rows, click Add Criterion. And I can again adjust the number of points. If I want to take off a level, I can do that. And note now I've got a different number of levels than before. Okay. Pretty easy to go and to create. Um, and just continue to do that type of thing. Look at your options here. You can order those whether they're ascending or descending. Mine are ascending, so the top points are on the right. Um, you can allow users to preview that rubric in the module. Um, so, and that's the example I showed when I went in as a student. I could see what is required of me before I submitted my final project. From an instructional standpoint, that is a good practice in general so the students know, but there might be situations where you wouldn't use that. They could uncheck that there. You can go and actually um, check to take off that whether the rubric description is used during evaluation. Um, and you can also check off to say whether the uh, display points for each level is uh, taken off during the evaluation. Um, the display points, that's kind of a unique item. If you were doing some blind uh, scoring, so you, had, you gave a project and you just gave the rubric to a uh, person and had them go and mark the different categories, uh, sometimes the points can sway you because you have a preconceived notion of what points sh a person should earn or such. And so if you just give categories and let them do that, that can be a more authentic method of grading. Okay. Uh, also here I mentioned that the default, it will allow you to add in text afterwards. Okay, So um, that's kind of a default level. You don't have to put it in when you're creating it. It'll just display. And then whether you want to show those remarks that you made to those people who are graded. Okay. So I've, I've made it. I'm going to click Save Rubric and make it ready. I'll let you go and take a look at it. You can go and edit it further if you'd like. Um, but now we're go we're ready to go look at the uh, the assignment again. And there's the rubric. So now as students come in, I could go in, I could click and I add the items in and save it. And then when they go to look at their grades or look at their assignment, they can see their feedback. So again, Rubrics very simple. It takes just a matter of moments to set them up. Um, the especially if you have a rubric already created, 
on your computer like in Microsoft Word. Uh, it's a matter of just copying and pasting. There is not an import feature, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to be looking for one to try to add to the system, but uh, we haven't seen one yet. So um, that is one of the down the the, um, the downsides right now of using rubrics. But uh, even copying and pasting, I can create a rubric within a matter of five minutes, get it up and going, and it saves not only a lot of time with assessment, but it's much more meaningful to the end user. And by putting that up front. It's a much more uh, better formative assessment piece so that students know exactly what are the expectations of a project as they go. And then you can scaffold, you can show them, here's a project that did earn uh, 2 out of 10 points on the first one. Here's what they should do to get 5 out of 10 or, or 10 out of 10, that type of thing. So, All right, uh, again, this is Evan Abbey for our Moodle Moments. Happy Moodling, everybody.